Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and what an honor and joy and privilege it is for me to be able to be with you today. Hey, I pray for the next few minutes you set aside whatever distractions would hinder you from receiving what God has for you. Do you know that every day, Every day, including this day, no matter where you're at, what you've done, no matter what has gone on in your life, do you realize that every day God wants to reveal himself to you in a way that you have not seen him before? That's what makes living for God so exciting. Revelation, revelation from his word and revelation from this time together. So right now, if you'll open your heart and say, God, show me something teach me something, reveal something to me that I've never seen before that will benefit my life in the moment, I receive it and I open myself up. If you, if you do that, God will show up and God will show out. Praise the Lord. Let's get into this today. Well, the title is Taking a Walk with God. You know, it amazes me that how God leads me sometimes in the messages that I've ministered over the years. I've received messages by watching movies, listening to music, walking down the street, driving down the road. At any moment, God can reveal something to me. And the other day I was walking and all of a sudden, a character in the Bible, a man in the Bible popped in my mind named Moses. And the Lord began to speak to me about our life, our journey, the process of becoming a believer, walking out our faith, that it's much like a walk, not a run, but it's much like a walk. And then I be he began to deal with me about walking consists of just steps. It is an initial action of moving forward. You know, God has more in front of you than he does behind you. We all have the past. We all have a history. We all can look back and see the good, the bad, the ugly. But I want to tell you, God has more in front of you, no matter your age. I don't care if you're 8 or 98. God has more in front of you today than he has and you have in your past. So it's important for us to look forward. We've all heard the, the analogies of, you know, the windshield in your car is much bigger than the rear view mirror. And they liken that to, it's more important to pay attention and face forward than it is to look back. Oh, we can look back and enjoy the victories. We can look back and learn, enjoy and, and be benefited by what we've grown in, what we've learned. But my friend, look forward. Look for, no matter where you're at, whether you're on the mountaintop today or whether you're in the pigsty, doesn't matter. Look forward. God has, I want you to, I, I want to try to arouse you and stir you in faith, to stir yourself up. The Bible d tells us we're to stir up ourselves, stir up our most holy faith. We're supposed to arouse ourselves to what God has in front of us. Well, as I said, I started thinking about Moses and his life and the journey. And I pray the Holy Spirit helps me to share this with you. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, the Word of God says, The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Let me read that again. The, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. God has your steps already preordained, already preordered. Let's look at the life of Moses. As a baby, he went from the comfort of his mother's bosom to the source that was trying to kill him, Pharaoh's house. Now think of his journey. Here's Moses. They've put out a, a, an edict that said, we're going to kill all of the children two years and under. It was the same spirit that when Jesus was do, uh, born, that that same decree went out to kill all of the children. And so Moses' mother, being a wise woman, decided that she would rather suffer the pain of being separated from her child 
and allow someone else to receive him and raise him. And so she built a little thatched basket and floated him down the river. And I believe it was Pharaoh's daughter that had received him, opened up the basket, and she kept the baby. The only problem, now I want you to catch this, because oftentimes in our life, God will call us to sacrifice, to separate ourselves from something, to offer up something. It could be our time, our resources. It could be what it's whatever God presses you. And she separated herself from little Moses. But the problem was with Pharaoh's daughter was that she was not pregnant. Therefore, she could not feed the child. So they went in search of someone who had a child. And I wonder the story that she gave to say, where's the baby? Maybe she, maybe she told a little lie and said the, the baby died. But in any case, they went on a search and they found Moses' mother who, who was able to nurse that little baby. So in a matter of hours... Moses was brought back to the bosom of his mother. Well, we're talking about taking a walk with God today. Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Now, I want you to think about this. He was born a Jew, but he would be raised an Egyptian. I want you to understand something. We now, after the fact, know what Moses' calling was. To be touched by God, to come and to set the Israelites free, the Jews free. Moses, being raised in the house of Pharaoh, was the opposite direction in our thinking of the direction that God had. But yet, God took him and allowed him to be placed in the house of Pharaoh to be raised as an Egyptian. He wasn't an Egyptian. He was a Jew. God took steps and allowed Moses to take steps in the opposite direction. Now, I'm belaboring this a little bit because so often... When we look at our life, it seems like we're heading in the wrong direction. God, this doesn't fit with what you've said, what you've spoken, what you've shown, what you've revealed. But yet, your heart is open to God, and you're desiring to do what God wants you to do. Maybe in your life right now, your present season, your present assignment is difficult, challenging, uncomfortable. But let me just share something with you. All of these seasons will fit in the plan and in the strategy of God. That is what we must rest in. That is what we must allow ourselves to, to Sabbath in, to repose in, to walk by faith in. How many things in your life can you look back and see that you didn't understand then but now you see the benefit and the strategy, and now what you went through has benefited you now in your life. Every one of us can do those things if we're willing to do it. And so on Moses' journey with God and taking a walk with God, as we see in his life, he eventually is expelled from Egypt. He was found out. His true nature, his true character, his true bloodline was discovered, and he was banished from the comfort of the palace to the uncertainty of the desert. Why? I want to say that again. He was banished from the comfort of the palace to the uncertainty of the desert. Once again, Moses' steps are going in the wrong direction. His calling is to be used by God 
to set the captives free, to see the Israelites released and so that they could go and freely worship God and create their own land that God had provided for them. They needed a deliverer, but now the deliverer is banished, walking out into the desert, leaving the comfort, the position, the power of the throne of Egypt and heading in the opposite direction. But he was not. For you see, my friend, the burning bush was not in Egypt. The burning bush was not in any other land other than the land that God led Moses to. You see, Moses, whether he realized it or not, was going on a walk with God in order to have an encounter with God that would change his life and his relationship with God. For 40 years, he was out in the desert tending flocks. He was a herdsman. And one day he looked up and he saw something burning, but yet was not consumed. And so he took a walk and he encountered God in the burning bush. And God in that encounter spoke to Moses and said, you are to go back to Egypt and set my people free. You see, taking a walk with God is a sequence of steps that does sometimes not make sense. Sometimes we don't understand them. Sometimes they don't make sense to us. But my friend, you need to understand and I need to understand that God's ways oftentimes are not our ways. His thoughts oftentimes are not our thoughts. His will is oftentimes opposite of what our will is. But when we surrender our lives to him, there is a freedom that, Lord, even though I don't understand the direction I'm heading in, one day I believe that I will. After 40 years in the desert, he encountered God and the burning bush. He was taken then from the desert to his destiny. Look at his life. The least likely person. Even, his, even in his own estimation, he argued with God. God, I stutter. And eventually, God allowed him to take a partner, a friend in the ministry to walk with him. But he left the place of the desert to discover the moment of his destiny. Do you feel like you're going through a desert season, a desert experience, a desert place? You know, in the desert, the first thing we think of is, where am I going to get water from? Sustenance, strength, life-giving water. And maybe in your life right now, maybe you have a dream, a desire, and you say, God, how? I don't know how. Maybe it's going to require a lot of finances. How, God? But yet you have this baby of a dream that God has implanted within you to care for, to nourish, to love, to speak over, to develop it, but yet you don't know how it's going to happen. Do you think Moses had it all figured out as he was walking back into Egypt with a staff in his hand, with a man walking with him to help him speak? The, he knew, what, I wonder what, what Pharaoh's going to think. I wonder if they're going to kill me immediately. I wonder if there's going to be some type of struggle. I wonder if they're going to laugh at me, mock me. Even the Israelites, he was freed from this place. Why would he come back? The questions that we have, he had. But my friend, as you look at the life of Moses, God was able to lead the children of Israel out of bondage through the hand and the mouth and the words, through the authority of God, through Moses, to eventually reach their promised land. My, my friend, if you're walking in a desert place today, God has a destiny for you. He's got a hope. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, he, his thoughts toward you are good and evil, and he has a, he has a future 
and a hope. Whether you can figure it out or not. Listen, there are some things that in my wife and I's life that just recently has, has answered questions over many years. And God's got moments like that for you. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've experienced, you need to know he's a faithful God. And, and as you open your life and say, God, I trust you. I believe you. I surrender my life once again to you. Lead me today into the destiny moments that you have already placed on the path of my life as I take a walk with you. Ah, God wants to walk with you. And in those walks, he wants to talk to you. He wants to lead you and show you his strength, his mercy, his grace, his love, and reveal the truth of your life in him to you. Hey, I love you. God loves you. Thank you for being so faithful. Please go into the description section immediately after the program. And won't you consider sowing a seed into the ministry, this ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. We're a ministry that's based on the good news of a life without fear. We believe that message, but we need your help. We thank you whether your gift is large or small, it'll be used for the glory of God and to further the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. I love you, God loves you, and as always remember, He is faithful.